I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psych Hacks, Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is the most toxic relationship belief. Unfortunately, the most toxic relationship belief is one of the most ubiquitous on this planet. It's toxic because it appears so benign. In reality, enactors of this belief tend to corrode a relationship from the inside out, simultaneously believing that they are entirely justified in doing so, which means that people go on to perpetuate the same error in future relationships, externalizing blame while feeling self-righteous. Happens all the time. Okay, so what is this toxic belief? It's very simple. In fact, it's so simple, you might not believe me when I tell it to you. So I'm going to ask you to please listen through to the rest of the episode so I can help you make sense of this. Here it is. The most toxic relationship belief is, my relationship is where I am free to be myself. I told you, you probably weren't gonna believe me. However, this belief destroys relationships. Now, you might be thinking, Dr. Orion, are you saying that we should be lying and faking in our relationships? No, it does not. That's a straw man argument. What I'm saying is that you are not free to be fully and completely yourself in a relationship. This belief is toxic because the people who endorse it tend to live their lives like this. Their implicit framework is out there, out there in the world, that's where I have to act. When I'm at my job, I have to put on a smile and do what my boss tells me. When I'm on the bus, I have to tolerate the rudeness and the body odor. When I'm with my family, I have to be a good daughter or the firstborn son. And sometimes even with my friends, I have to pretend to be interested in Marlene's latest interpersonal drama or Stephen's ill-remembered recapitulation of whatever the media has encouraged him to think. But in my relationships, that's where I get to let it all go. That's where I just get to be myself. I don't have to try. I don't have to perform. I don't have to generate value. My relationship is where I get to drop all role playing, be accepted unconditionally, and finally be myself. That is a toxic belief. Now, before I go any further, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this video to someone who might benefit from its message. It's word of mouth referrals like this that actually really help to grow the channel. And if you're thinking about going to grad school, please be sure to check out my top-rated GRE self-study course at StellarGRE.com. You can use the coupon code PSYCH to get 10% off all membership plans. The fact of the matter is that a relationship, or at least a good relationship, is a privilege. Much like a job, or at least a good job, is a privilege. Nobody thinks that they should be able to just be themselves at work. Does that mean that people are lying and faking at work? I'm sure some of them are. However, a better way of thinking about it is that most people are channeling a version of themselves at work that is conducive to professionalism, which is what we tend to socially expect from people occupying a professional role. And why do we expect this? Because it eases the professional relationship. It is easier to do business with someone who is acting professionally than it is to do business with someone acting unprofessionally. Wouldn't you agree? So professionalism is a version of yourself that is appropriate to a specific kind of role because it facilitates the transaction of value. Does that make sense? The same thing is true for your intimate relationships. Boyfriend is a role. Wife is a role. This means that we tend to have certain expectations of people occupying such roles. And why do we expect this? Because it eases the intimate relationship, facilitating the transaction of value, which is why the people are there. And assuming that you have a good boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife, it is a privilege to occupy that role. I hate to break it to you, but the only time when you are free to be yourself is when you are alone. You may not want to hear it, but it's the truth. Relationships are roles. Some of that role is socially determined, and some of that role is defined by negotiated expectations. But a role is a role. 
saying or doing things that conflict with the expectations of that role is going to go over in that relationship about as well as saying or doing things that conflict with professionalism will at work. And the most common way that people conflict with their relationship roles is by slacking off. At work, you have to do your job every single day. You do not reach a point at work where you get to stop trying. Every day, you have to show up and deliver. You need some time off, you take some time off. But you do not get to clock in and not make an effort. If you fail to do so, people will fail to pay you. And this is entirely reasonable. Paying you for not making an effort is being complicit in your own robbery. And if this is something that is difficult for you to understand, then perhaps the privilege of a job isn't for you. A relationship is no different. You have to show up every single day. You do not reach a point in your relationship where you get to stop trying. Every day, you have to show up and deliver. You need some time to yourself, you take some time to yourself. But you do not get to clock in and not make an effort. If you fail to do so, people will fail to compensate you with the benefits of a relationship. And this is entirely reasonable. Compensating you for not making an effort is being complicit in the theft of your time, among other things. And if this is something that is difficult for you to understand, then perhaps the privilege of a relationship isn't for you. Let me give you a very specific example of how this commonly presents itself in heterosexual relationships. I often hear men complaining to me that when their woman wakes up in the morning, she puts on a smart looking outfit, she puts on high heeled shoes, she puts on her makeup, and then she goes out to work. But then she takes off that makeup and changes into sweatpants when she comes home in the evening when she is free to be herself. Ladies, I understand that it might be more comfortable to wear sweatpants around the house, but I guarantee you what your man is thinking is, why does the stranger that you interact with professionally get to enjoy a more attractive version of you than I do? Why are you more charming and presentable with customers than you are with me? And given the fact that I'm investing a lot in this relationship, I'm starting to feel hurt and cheated because you seem to be making less of an effort. This is a small example of how a relationship can be corroded from the inside out by failing to live up to role expectations. If you approach relationships like roles, and if you perform those roles capably, then you get to enjoy the privileges of those relationships. And if you stop performing those roles capably, then over time, you compromise your right to occupy that place. This means that you are not free to be yourself in a relationship. That said, you are free to express those parts of yourself that are most conducive to that role within your relationship. And if you do that successfully, you make the relationship easy, which facilitates the transaction of value. What do you think? Is there benefit to approaching relationships like roles? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've gotten this far, you might as well like this episode and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for listening.